In this demonstration, we will review the iPurchase approval workflow. I've logged in as user Frank, entered a requisition with two line items, and submitted that requisition for approval. I've left the Are All Items Required checkbox unchecked, which means approvers can approve or reject individual line items. We've covered that before. The Approval History tab shows us there are six different approvals required for this requisition, beginning with Supervisor 1 and ending with Buyer Craig Wolfus. I am now going to log in as Supervisor 1 and show how requisitions are approved via iPurchase. When I log in as an approver, iPurchase will display my pending queue. My queue contains all requisitions that I need to approve. You can see that I have four recs sitting in my queue waiting for approval. Some users, senior management for example, have the ability to approve directly from this screen. They can select the requisitions they want to approve and click on the batch approve icon at the top. Other approvers will not have this privilege. From this screen, we can view requisition line items by clicking on the blue arrow icon. I can print this requisition by clicking on the printer icon, which produces a full single page display of the requisition. Or, I can actually go into the rec and approve it by clicking on the blue pencil. When I click on the blue pencil, it shows me the approval history for this requisition first. And from here, I can change tabs to see all the data related to this requisition. Some users have the ability to modify data, as you can see with this user because fields are enabled. Again, this functionality is not given to all users. When a user is allowed to modify, whether increasing quantities or prices or making any changes, the system will always check if the requisition needs to be rerouted based on the changes. The system is constantly checking the approval rules to determine if any changes require the requisition to reroute. I can make changes if I like, but will not make any changes in this case. The line item data is viewable here and I have access to all screens and information. If I'm rejecting a rec, I would go into the Approve Reject tab where iPurchase allows us to select a rejection code. We can use these codes in analysis. I can also enter approval and or rejection notes. If I was approving this rec, I can approve the lines by clicking on the little circle. Green is approved, red is rejected, and yellow means that I am abstaining, leaving the decision for the next approver in the chain. I also have an Approve All Lines option, which will approve all lines. To approve, click on the Approve icon. To reject, click on the Reject icon. We also have an option to put an approval on hold. If we were waiting for information from a supplier, for example, we could put this requisition on hold so it won't go through. The built-in escalation process will go on hold because we are waiting for additional information. The On Hold icon will show in everyone's queue so they know we are waiting. I will approve now iPurchase prompts me for my password one more time. I will then click OK. You see now that it has been removed from my queue and I only have three recs left. By the way, here is an on hold rec. You see the icon is displayed and you can see there are notes attached to that reason. Now that I have approved the rec as Supervisor 1, I will log out of the system and log back in as Supervisor 2. And this process would just continue until the entire requisition is approved. Again, here is Supervisor 2's approval queue. I will click on the blue icon and we see that Supervisor 1 has approved the rec and Supervisor 2 is pending approval. While we're on this tab, let's discuss what all this means. The first thing to note is that iPurchase has both sequential and simultaneous approvals. Sequential approvals means the next approval needs to wait until the previous approver has approved. This was the case between Supervisor 1 and Supervisor 2. Supervisor 2 was not notified of an approval until Supervisor 1 actually approved. If Supervisor 1 had rejected this requisition, Supervisor 2 would not have been notified at all. In the same way, you will notice Alex Chen and all of the subsequent approvers are not notified of this requisition yet. That is how sequential approvals work. Simultaneous approvals are the level 30s. We have two approvals required in level 30. When we have the same level number, those people are notified together at the same time and they can come in in any order and approve. That is how simultaneous approvals work. You will also notice that we have the finance group on level 30. The finance group has two members, Jim Bird and Bob Carter. We require any of the members of a group to approve, not all. 
We also have a little sailboat icon next to Craig Wolfus. That sailboat indicates that Craig is on vacation and R Plus is the designated approver for Craig while he is away. The next thing to note is that iPurchase offers both supervisory approvals as well as dynamic rules-based approvals. Supervisory approvals are best described as being like an organizational chart. Each user in the system is assigned a supervisor. Each user is also assigned a dollar amount, which becomes their approval limit. Once that limit has been exceeded, the system will route to the supervisor. Once the supervisor's limit has been exceeded, it will route to the supervisor's supervisor. It will keep going until it finds a supervisor whose approval limit exceeds the total requisition cost. In our case, our REC's total cost is $1,100. If we look at Supervisor 1, we see that he has an approval limit of $1,000. Supervisor 2 has an approval limit of $1 million. So because the REC is $1,100, it will stop looking for supervisors at Supervisor 2, and it will insert Supervisors 1 and 2 into the routing. That's the first type of approval process, and you can choose to turn supervisory approvals on or off. The second type is Dynamic Rules Routing. Dynamic rules are a user-definable set of conditions which can use any data on the requisition to create a rule. If that rule evaluates to true, then the approvers associated with that rule are inserted into the routing. Any data, such as department, cost, ship via, cost center, the supplier, any data that you see on any iPurchase screen, header, or line item can be used to create Boolean conditions for rules. When those rules evaluate to true, approvers are inserted. The last four rules on this screen are all based on dynamic rules. We have already approved as Supervisor 1. The next step would be to approve as Supervisor 2. I'm going to approve this requisition and we would continue until everyone has approved. To save time, we'll just cut to the point where most approvals have been done. So now we've approved for everyone up until the last approver. We're going to log in as Craig Wolfus, who is the buyer. You will notice that Craig is on vacation. So when Craig logs in, I purchase prompts to see if you want to flag that you are back in the office. I will leave it that I am still out of office. Here is the requisition that we're working with. I'll go into the approval screen and you see that I have approved for everyone except the buyer. Now, when the last person approves, I purchase will create the purchase order. I'm going to approve for Craig and you will see the system approving the requisition and creating the purchase order. Let's go in and take a look at that purchase order. We'll go back into the REC and here is the PO, number 1684, that was created. We can print the purchase order by clicking on the printer icon and it will open that file. And here is the purchase order coming out of your ERP solution. We'll use QAD Enterprise applications for this example. There are two line items with an approval signature embedded down at the bottom. There is no need to go into the ERP application to create a purchase order. iPurchase automatically creates the PO upon final approval. It will also email the purchase order out to the supplier's contact address should you choose to turn that functionality on. If you are working on a punch-out, the purchase order is also electronically submitted directly to the supplier's EDI system, so the supplier will get an electronic version of that purchase order as well. The originator is notified that the purchase order has been created. If you have the automatic supplier contact functionality turned off, the buyer can click on the email PO button at the top and manually send out the email to the supplier. They can choose whether or not to include attachments, to include a confirmation link, or to include a message here and then send it off to the supplier. This concludes the iPurchase approvals demonstration. For more information about iPurchase or any of ISS Group's suite of add value products, visit our website, issgroup.com.